Hey guys, this is Carissa with Inky Fairy Designs. Welcome back to day three of my 12 days of creative Christmas. And we are making this adorable little card. It's a very simple watercoloring. I pulled out some of my other favorite kind of watercolors that we'll talk about in a bit. But the stamp set that I'm using is called Winter Is Here. It was part of the Simon Says Stamp and Greeting Farm collaboration for Stamp Timber. So I apologize in advance that that stamp set is no longer available. But maybe you got it and maybe this will give you some inspiration on how to use it. So I am watercoloring on some Strathmore card. It's, um, it's a card base that's already like folded and pre-scored and it's watercolor paper and I absolutely love it. Um, it's a large card, 5 by 7 and I actually stamped on it using the Brutus Monroe detail ink that I've been loving using with watercolors lately. So I stamped this the simple scene, the little girl um, and the two little hedgehogs on either side, and a sentiment that says it's snuggle season, which I think we can all agree, like if you're in like the United States or the um, northern hemisphere, like we're in the winter, reaching up into the winter time. So... Um, it's snuggle season. I love to have my blanket on the couch. Um, I love snuggling with my baby girl and all my kids that will still snuggle with me. And um, yeah, so I thought that was a super cute sentiment. So I am starting out with Jane Davenport watercolors. Now I love these watercolors for the only reason is that I don't have to mix a skin tone because there's like three um, or four different skin tone-ish um, watercolors pre-mixed in that palette and I believe it's in the neutrals palette and I put like a mixture of her brights and her neutrals in that little turquoise palette so they can have them all together but that's all I used the uh, Jane Davenport palette for today. I pulled out um, these adorable little tins. Uh, they're by Rachel Beth Designs. She is on Etsy. I will put a link in the description box below along with all of the other supplies that I use. And she hand curates these or she hand makes these um, watercolor sets. And I don't know if they still come in these little tins because I'll be honest with you, last year is when I was on this like huge obsession kick with her watercolors and I bought tons and I haven't bought any since then. Um, it may have been like a pregnancy thing. I was pregnant at the time and I would see her watercolors on Instagram and I just had to have them and I got them. And now, I don't know, this whole year I have not bought a new set from her. But they're great watercolors. They're a bit chalky. Um, I like them to do kind of like small images like this. And I, the one thing that I really loved about her colors is, is the um, sets that she would put together. Like this rustic farm. I mean, the name itself, if you have a cute name for something, I am more likely to buy it. I don't know why that is, but it is. So I liked the Rustic Farm, plus I liked the color combinations that she would put together because they were not combinations that I might gravitate or think of myself. So I could pull out, oh, this is cute. I'll use the red or the browns and the greens in this set for this part. And then I pulled out, um, I don't even know what the other name of the set is, something autumn, um, but... Yeah, it had pretty colors. It had another like mustardy yellow in it. And I just thought it would be fun to use on this stamp set. Not a traditional green, like red and green, but it is a red and green that I have on this image. So I used the brown, um, which I think is called Deep Walnut. And then the yellow, I actually have this one in front of me. The yellow is Golden Wheat. And I mix those together a bit to kind of get an in-between tone for the little hedgehog bodies. I use the brown straight for their little spines. And I end up using the same color uh, for her hair. So I basically, these two tins, these eight colors, uh, other than her skin tone, like I told you, I use the Jane Davenport for... Um, that is where my color combination comes for the entire image, and that's nice. I love these little tints. They're great for traveling. I remember actually taking them with me when I had doctor's appointments last year when I was pregnant um, because they were so easy to um, travel with or just kind of 
toss into a little bag, put in my purse with some um, travel brushes. And yeah, they're great. They're great for that. So I like them a lot. I haven't used them in a while. And I think it's just because I have a lot. And then here you go. I tell you time and time again, do not color things next to each other that are wet. And that is why you saw as soon as I brought in that green to do the little area in between her jacket, those little hearts were still wet and it just sopped up that color like it was nobody's business. And that is why you want to make sure um, when you're watercoloring that you're not watercoloring next to any something else that is still wet and so you saw me bring in the heat tool and dry that so that I could continue going and that's what I do actually this entire video or this entire coloring or making this car took me about less than 25 minutes I did speed it up just so that I'm not sitting here talking to you for 25 minutes but this video is completely well there I go again you saw <laughs> I was coloring next to something that was wet again, but it, this entire video is not edited as far as like chopping things out. You see where I'm mixing the colors. You see where I um, am making, and I do tend to leave in the mistakes like if I'm coloring next to something and it, um, you know, I don't cut that kind of stuff out, but I do cut the dry time out. Um, so you st you'll see me come in with my heat tool and drying things up when those kinds of things happen. And that's just what that's what I do like I try to keep that stuff out um, but in this video it was so short anyway I didn't have a problem just speeding it up and letting you kind of see how the entire process came together so once those little hedgehog bodies were dry I mixed up um, some more I added a little bit more brown to that yellowish area and then just um, created some shadows for them because they were looking a little bit flat same thing with her shoes so a lot of times I'll come in with a wash of color or just kind of bring in the color and then I come in when it's dry and try to add some more dimension like with her hair I just did a wash of that color and now I came in with a little bit darker color or even sometimes the same color will work and you can add those little details to it so this image is really very super simple to color. I am going in now that her her face is completely dry. I'm just trying to add in some more shading around her hair and around her hat. And then I come in and we have some issues with her cheeks. So I'll go ahead and kind of explain what happens here. I mix up a cheek color or I actually pull in um, a really bright pink from the Jane Davenport collection and I put it on her cheeks and it's just like BAM those are cheeks they were super super pink I went to uh, make sure that her ha uh, face was all dry before I did that because otherwise if it was still wet it would just go like bloop, all over her face and so you see there it's like hot pink so I didn't like that I'm trying to blend it out still don't like it it's very hot pink because a lot of the colors are muted that I have in the rest of the image and so that pink was just registering as way too pink so I blended it out I was able to blot it up with a paper towel and then I just kind of blended out her skin tone give her a little bit more pink pinkish tone and now I'm and now off screen you don't really see it because I want you to see the coloring more than kind of like the mixing but I end up mixing that same pink that I used with the skin tone that I had mixed on the palette already and it toned it down just enough that um, it give it gives her some cheek color but it's not that bright pink that was um, originally there so I think I'm done coloring the image right now I'm looking for another one of the Rachel Beth um, sets that I like this has all the blues in it so I think I found it I'm gonna go ahead and add some grass or some grounding to my images first and I'm using the same greens that I used throughout the image and that just like I said it just makes it simple I have eight colors basically that I'm using on this entire image and just by vary variating the the shades or the lightness or the darkness or maybe mixing some of the other colors together I can get some variations of those colors and give the image um, a lot of interest and depth without having to have a ton of watercolors on my desk or if you're just starting out you don't have to have a ton of watercolors to get um, a look like this on your images as well 
So, like, Winter Wonderland, that's what I'm talking about, with Rachel Beth's watercolors. They're so stinking cute, the names. So, I had to have this one. Um, I absolutely love the two blues that are in there and that gray. I really needed a gray. It's, a, it's really a light gray, though. A lot lighter than I um, hoped, but I, it's a really cool gray. It is actually a cool gray. It's not a warm gray, so I really like it. So I'm just mixing those two blues to create a sky behind her and I'll come in and add some more green to the grass. And when I'm doing the backgrounds like this, um, you'll see that it, it's during this process that I don't care if I'm working next to something that is wet. I love it when a part of my blue sky kind of ble bleeds into the green grass or vice versa. I think it just really blends the um, entire image together and adds um, some interest and actually pulls the piece together. It makes it cohesive. And I love that about blending like a sky and the grass at the same exact time. So now in this same Winter Wonderland set, she has like a white and it has like, like flecks of actual glitter in it and so here that's what I'm doing I am trying to scrub that glitter off of the pan and into my wet background so I'm just kind of dabbing it and looking to see I actually one of my kids was like sitting next to me while I was doing this and I was like do you see the glitter do you see the glitter you can kind of see the glitter but it wasn't as um, shimmery or as there it's like little it's like little bits of glitter it's not like a shimmer or um, like a Primatech kind of watercolor where it's just got that beautiful kind of sparkly to it. I love that it's like a chunky glitter in it. So that really wraps up the coloring. I think it's so cute and it's so simple. Um, I love these watercolor uh, cards by Strathmore. They make it easy to um, stamp or watercolor something and pop it in the mail really easily. I actually created a, a matching envelope, but I totally forgot to film that part. But I think it's really cute, and I hope that you enjoy this day three of the Creative Christmas series. I promise I have some ornaments in planned. I have um, some uh, mixed media planned for you this week. So stay tuned. I love your comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back tomorrow for another Creative Christmas video. Until then, stay inspired, be creative, and share that with others. Bye.